Hey game makers, Pixelator Pope here. This time I'm doing something a bit different from the usual tutorial. Today I deliver unto you from on high the 15 commandments of Game Maker. Wait, 15? Shouldn't it be 10? No, because I'm not a klutz like Moses. All pay heed! The Lord, the Lord Jehovah, has given unto you these 15. Wait. 10! 10 commandments! for all to obey. However, these won't really be commandments, if I'm honest. As I've helped a lot of newer Game Maker users over the years, I've seen many of the same mistakes and bad habits over and over again. So this is really a list of suggestions, and you can definitely still make a game while ignoring every single one. That being said, whenever somebody has asked for help with their code and they didn't follow these commandments, it forces me to roll my eyes and sigh heavily. So without further ado, the 15 commandments of using Game Maker presented in no particular order. Thou shalt read the manual and seek guidance within before thou asks others. I just can't say this enough. Understanding what GM can do for you is so powerful. This isn't about memorizing the manual. This is about planting the seed of what GM is capable of. So the next time you're trying to solve a problem, you have this thought in the back of your mind like, wait a minute, I read about something like this in the manual. Just open up the help file, expand the reference section, and start reading. Skim over sections you don't really care about, such as advertising or in-app purchases, but go through as much as you possibly can. And at least attempt to check the manual before posting a question on the forums. There are so many answers in there. Use the index, use the search. If a script isn't working the way you expect, middle mouse click on it and read the article for it, including the example code. The more comfortable with the manual you are, the less you'll need to rely on other people's help on the forums and chat rooms, which means you work faster. Thou shalt not use drag and drop. I absolutely respect what YoYo has done with the drag and drop coding in Game Maker. It presents a very attractive front to the world of game development, and for absolutely no experienced beginners, it's a great starting point. But the sooner you take those training wheels off and start working in GML, the better. Many things are actually much, much more difficult to do with drag and drop, and when you get stuck, finding help or tutorials is going to be just as hard. The advanced GM users in the community don't use drag and drop and won't know how to help you accomplish your goals using it. Jump into GML as soon as possible, because every moment struggling with GML is a valuable learning experience, while every moment struggling with D&D is largely wasted when you eventually do make that jump. Thou shalt manage thy white space. White space is what we call the area around your code. The indentations of code inside of brackets, line breaks between different blocks of code, etc. Managing your white space makes your code more readable, and making your code more easy to read is going to save you a lot of headaches in the future when maintaining it. I don't care what coding style you choose, if you put open curly brackets on the same line as the if statement or on the line below, just pick a style and stick with it. I go a bit more in depth with this in a post on my abandoned blog, which I've linked in the description below. Thou shalt name thy variables descriptively and consistently. Using a consistent naming convention is so important. This is another topic I wrote a blog post on years ago, and I recommend giving it a read. It's linked down below as well. The core point is this. You should be writing your code as if you were writing it for someone else. Because in a week, a month, six months, you will be someone else. If you are trying to maintain your code and you haven't named variables descriptively, you are going to spend tons of time trying to figure out what it's being used for. Spell out your variable names. Don't abbreviate or use initializations. Write for someone else. The few moments you save from having a shorter variable name aren't worth the minutes or hours you may spend trying to figure out what the variable CV stands for six months after you wrote it. 
Thou shalt not use persistent runes. Persistent rooms seems like a good idea. You want the room to stay in the exact same state as it was when you left it. Check the box and you're good to go, right? But this has so many potential problems and is really only a temporary solution. Persistent rooms can be unpredictable because, and this will be a running theme throughout this video, it's a black box. When you check this option, GM takes control away from you and starts doing stuff underneath the hood. What's it doing? How is it saving stuff? Is there anything that isn't saved? I don't know. You don't know. Few people besides the developers really do. Anytime you surrender control over how your game works, especially on large features, you are taking a risk. It might be okay for a while, but eventually it will not work exactly as you want, and you'll be back to square one. It's better to just build a proper save system and keep control of your game in your hands. Thou shalt not use the physics engine if your game does not require a physics simulation. Using the physics engine is not a shortcut. If you're making a platformer or a top-down action RPG, using the physics engine to manage your collisions is going to cause way more pain than it will prevent. If the game you're making is similar to a game that could be on the Super Nintendo, don't use the physics engine. Learn to code your own collisions and basic motion physics. Thou shalt not make your pixel art game any larger than 960 by 540. Do not make your game 1080p. Please, you have no idea how many problems you are going to run into by trying to make a true HD game with GM. This is true of any art style, but especially pixel art. If you're using pixel art, there is zero reason to make your game 1080p. My advice, do this. Take 1920 and divide it by a whole number. Two, three, four. The higher the better. Divide 1080 by that same number. That is your new resolution. It will scale perfectly to the most common screen resolution out there, and you won't have hundreds of enormous texture pages bogging down your game and your build times. The first time someone starts using views, they'll set it up to follow their player or follow a camera object that follows their player. You've likely done this at some point. I certainly have, but it causes one really big problem. If your port is larger than your view, which it probably is, your game will seem very jittery. I explain why in detail in the end of my previous video on cameras and views. Point is, don't use object following. Instead, manually position your camera in code. Again, this will give you more control over how your camera actually works and allows your camera to take advantage of subpixels like the rest of your game, which will fix the jitters. Thou shalt use double equals when comparing values. Game Maker allows you to do a lot of things that very few other languages would allow. The syntax isn't very strict, and that's part of what makes GM so beginner friendly. One of these things you can do is this, if variable equals true. In almost any other programming language on the planet, this would give you an error. A single equals sign is used for setting a variable to a value. A double equals sign is used to compare two values. Following this rule is a good habit to get into, especially if you ever want to move to a more advanced language. And it's just a good idea to always code what you mean. If you're doing a comparison, use the syntax that can only mean comparison. It makes your code more literal and therefore more readable and less prone to bugs. Thou shalt not use one in place of true, nor zero in place of false. Again, this is all about code readability and consistency. Code literally. If you want to set something to true, why would you set it to 1? Yes, they are technically the same thing in GameMaker, but you are only inviting confusion by using them interchangeably. If you mean true, write true. If you mean false, write false. Typing those extra 3 or 4 characters is not going to slow you down that much. Quick side note, when you are saying if variable equals true or if variable equals false, you actually don't need the equals true or false at all. 
you can just say if variable or if not variable, and it does the exact same thing. Thou shalt not use magic numbers. Oh boy, what is a magic number? A magic number is any specific value floating freely in your code. Let's look at an example. This code will draw a semi-transparent rounded rectangle in the bottom corner of my screen, and it looks pretty good. But what's with all these seemingly random numbers? 16, 192, 440, 240? It obviously works, but why did I choose those specific numbers? Now, what if I want to move that text box or change how much space is around the edges? I would need to change every single one of those values. That's why you don't use magic numbers. If you want to change something later, it is a total pain. Additionally, since they are just seemingly random numbers, I have no idea what they mean or how those numbers were decided on. Remember, code as if someone else needs to read it and know what's going on. Instead, break all those numbers out into their own variables. This will make your code way more flexible and more readable. Obviously, you can't remove all magic numbers, but at the very least, you can give your numbers a more meaningful name by storing them in a local variable. Yes, that is way more code, but you need to squash anything in your head that is telling you that fewer lines equals better code. That's just not true. Notice I'm using the GUI size scripts to help calculate my new variables. I had already considered the GUI width and height to determine those original magic numbers, so instead I just called a function that provide them. Now if I want to reposition the text box, change the margin, or allow my GUI resolution to change, all the other values are recalculated for me. It's not always necessary to replace every single magic number with a variable. The odd zero or one or two is usually self-explanatory enough to not need to be moved out. But reducing the use of magic numbers is always a noble goal. Thou shalt not use the self keyword. Self is a built-in keyword in GameMaker similar to all, other, and no one. It is supposed to refer to the ID of the instance currently running the code that has the keyword in it. But we already have a variable for that, ID. If you are ever using the self keyword, you should probably be using ID instead. See, the issue is that keyword self is not the same as ID. Self is literally negative one. GameMaker, under the hood, We'll take that negative one and through yet another black box, we'll turn it into your ID. You are relying on magic under the hood when you really don't need to. Just don't use it. You literally never need to use self. Just use ID. Thou shalt not preemptively worry about performance issues. I get it. You want to do things right the first time, and prevent yourself from having to go back and recode something. And games need to be coded as efficiently as possible to make sure they run on as many devices as possible as smoothly as possible, right? No. I mean, yes, efficiency is a very good goal. But unless you are an experienced developer already, then you shouldn't worry about code optimization until it becomes a real problem. Don't worry about performance issues before you have performance issues. Build your game implement your features, and just get things to work. Expect to have to refactor things later, but you may be surprised what things you don't have to. Worry less, code more, make progress. Thou shalt not use the solid checkbox, nor the associated scripts. Ah, solid. Another one of those black boxes built into GameMaker. When you check that solid box, what is actually happening? You probably aren't sure, you just know it helps keep your player from getting stuck in your walls. And that's true. When you have a solid object and a non-solid object is overlapping it, GM does stuff under the hood to push the non-solid object out of it. But how does it push stuff out? Does it push it out in the same direction it was coming from? Does it push it out to the closest place where it's no longer overlapping? Regardless, when you use the solid checkbox, you forfeit control over what happens when two objects collide. It may seem like it does what you want now, but eventually you'll want it to behave differently, and then you are back to square one again. Save yourself the trouble and learn how to do proper manual collision detection. There are tons of resources out there for it, and it will absolutely be worth it. 
Thou shalt use the draw GUI event to draw things relative to your game window. You just added a camera to your game so your character can move around a large room, but wait a minute, where'd your health bar go? Oh, there it is. It's only visible when I'm in the top left corner of the room. Guess I should change all of my health bar drawing code to take the camera's position into account. No! Bad programmer. If you want to draw something to the screen, use the Draw GUI event. All drawing done in the Draw GUI event is screen relative. 00, zero will always be the top left corner, and display get GUI width, comma display get GUI height will always be the bottom right corner, regardless of where your camera is in your room. It also has the added bonus of always being on top of anything drawn inside a normal draw event, so you don't need a separate object to draw your player's health bar if you don't want to. Trust in the GUI layer. It is your friend. And that's it. 15 simple suggestions to help you when working with GameMaker. They may not seem important, but they will be very important when it comes time to show your code to someone else to get help. Don't agree with me? Have other suggestions you think people should follow? Leave a comment below and let's talk about it. While you're down there, don't forget to like the video if you found any of this helpful, and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos in the future. Regardless, thanks for watching, now go make something awesome.